What's happening, guys? And welcome back to the channel. And Chelsea made it another win in the Champions League group stage, notching up a 1-0 win away in Sweden against Malmo. I mean, the 1-0 scoreline might suggest a close game, but in fact, George, this was anything but close. Um, Malmo sticking 11 men behind the ball pretty much the whole game, and it was more like a training match. Um, it's just a case of when we, when we were going to break them down, not if. Um, they obviously made it a lot harder than than the home leg. What did you make of the match as a spectacle? Well, it wasn't much of a spectacle, was it? It was uh, quite boring to watch, but I think the words you used uh, just in the build-up there was was efficient, and I think Chelsea put on an efficient performance. It's always difficult because the expectation is quite high to to go and batter these teams, but got to respect the opposition. Um, they're in Champions League for a reason, and like you said, mate, they're going to put ten men behind the ball, and not not maybe through lack of trying. I think sometimes it's just because they're playing such a high quality opposition. It's difficult to get out of your own half. By the way, that you know players like Thiago Silva and the defensive back line and the middle block just press. It's, it's very difficult sometimes to get out. So I think they made a really good account of themselves, Malmo. Would have liked to have scored, obviously, at home. And, you know, they've only got a few games left in the group. But for Chelsea, it was a, I would have said, a, a OK performance, but a job well done. And I mean, you know, I'll, get, I'll roll off the stats in a minute. But again, another win, another clean sheet for the Blues. Yeah, I think that's that's all we could ask for, really. Turn up, get the job done. Another clean sheet, three points back back on the plane home, and and you, and you, and you move on to the weekend. In terms of the lineup, uh, mate, um, I think fairly, given what was available, pretty much almost picked itself. I mean, oh, nice rotation of the fullbacks using the squad there. I think it's important to give Chilwell and Reese James a bit of a breather every now and then. This was a perfect game to do so. Um, the midfield two picked itself. Kante left at home. Kovacic still injured. Sound against for me, not not ready. So it was going to be Ruben and Jorginho. And then the front three, Pulisic not ready to start yet. So that kind of picked itself. So the only one that I was slightly unsure about, um, not unsure about perhaps, but, you know, thought Trevor Chalaba deserved to play. Um, they went with Thiago Silva instead. I feel he's probably gone with him for Champions League experience. But yeah, mate, anything to say on the lineup? Pretty Pretty straightforward, really. Well, it was straightforward, but again, Thomas Tuchel completely uh, bowled me over with my prediction. Of, I thought he was going to go strong again, just because I thought away at Malmo, we, we needed a result and thought he wouldn't rotate the fullbacks. I said that uh, yesterday in our in our video. And um, yeah, we said we wanted Loftus-Cheek to be given a go. But um, yeah, I, I, was, I, was, I wouldn't say surprise is the right word, but I think Tuchel, again, gave the confidence in the, in the squad tonight. And... Again, no doubts in Thomas Tuchel's ability to tactically to win matches and have the best team out there to do the job. And he's done it again. Yeah, I mean, in that first half, George, very much one-way traffic, as we've kind of said. Um, <laughs> but we had, we had a few opportunities. I thought Hakim Ziyech um, did, was, pretty, was pretty good in that first half. Arguably our most dangerous player as such. You know, every time he got the ball, it looked like something was going to happen. I know this is only Malmo and it's not a great level of opposition. You can only <laughs> play what, what you're up against. Um, what did you make of his performance? He's had a bit of a run in the side now. Look, I know he obviously got his goal as well, which we'll come on to. But what did you make of him as a whole tonight? Well, he's got an, he's got an opportunity with with players out injured. This is the chance for him to step up. And I think at this level, there's there's no doubt that he's got ability. Uh, I'm not questioning his ability. I just think sometimes his final product, his decision making, um, and particularly his off the ball decision making. Again, it's it's you know he needs to work a bit harder. Certainly physically, I think he needs to put on some some muscle, um, work on his right foot a little bit. But an improved performance. I mean, if I'm looking at the positives, definitely an improved performance. He, he has stepped up. He has done a job. And as you're going to come on to, mate, he's ultimately, you know, even though it's a tap in, he's ultimately made the difference. So you can't argue with that. Yeah, no, I, I think, you know, whether he's going to be good enough for Chelsea in the long run is, is a different conversation. But tonight he, he had a positive performance and we have, we have, we have to accept that. Um, another player, George, I thought was outstanding on the night. Ruben off the cheek in the middle of the park was was pretty good, I thought. Again, um, some lovely bits of skill in the first half. The way that he receives the ball on the turn and just glides past players, it's, it's not something we tend to see that often. Um, and, you know, a couple of opportunities, played a nice ball through to Kai Havertz in that first half, which he should, should have done better with. Um, another positive performance from him, and he should be in with a shout of maintaining his place in the lineup for Burnley on the weekend, you would have thought. 
Yeah, I hope so. And I would encourage it. I think he's one of those players, like we said, that drives forward with the ball. There's very little players like him um, in the Chelsea setup and, and in the Premier League, to be honest, with his, his stature and his ability to take the ball and, and just, as you said, mate, glide past defenders and, and players because they can't touch him because he's so, he's so, you know, he's so tall, he's so strong, great balance, um, great anticipation. Uh, I've, I've noticed a lot of managers saying about the, the ability of players scanning before they receive the ball and he does it more than most and uh, you know we're, we're both huge fans of Loftus Cheek he's becoming that well-established player now and it's just whether Thomas Tuchel again when he's given all the options at everyone's fit is he is he still in the starting lineup probably not but it's great to see him out there getting minutes especially after such a horrific injury that set him back a couple of years yeah, no, 100%. It's great to see him out there and hopefully he can push on and perhaps get trusted now in the bigger games. So I think you've mentioned before, that's kind of the next step for him now to be trusted to start in, in the big games against the top level opposition. Um, obviously, going to the break, kind of goalless at half time is just kind of waiting for when that goal is going to come. And it comes quite soon into that second half. One thing I do want to highlight is that a great switch at half time from Thomas Tuchel in terms of switching Hakim Zayac and Callum Hudson Odoi to opposite flanks, um, just little details like that, which ultimately paid great dividends for the goal. His wife for me, is one of, he is the best in-game manager in world football at the moment. And we come to the goal, it's great play from Kai Havertz to hold that ball up um, with two defenders on him to then play Hudson and for that pre-assist. And Callum just looks up, plays a great ball just out of reach of the defenders. And Hakim Ziyech is, is is there to tap it in and finish it off. Uh, it was a really nice move, wasn't it, mate? Yeah, and it's so refreshing to see because I think one of the things that we really were frustrated at in the early stages, Thomas Tuchel, and obviously under Frank, was being clinical. And that that move, as you described there, was just being so clinical, you know, getting the ball, driving forward, and just a killer pass from Hudson Adoy that just completely takes out the entire back line. And then it's just a simple, you know, he can't miss. I mean, it's just a simple tap in. Um, but that shows just how positive and how far we've come that when we got our chance tonight, we took it and that's all we needed. And we were so, I mean, some of the things that we've done, another clean sheet, I mean, Mendy, I think it's, I think he's got 16 or 14 clean sheets in the last 16 or so games in the Champions League, which is just ridiculous. Um, you know, and I think we've, um, our last seven games that we've won, we've only conceded, I think something like two goals. So again, just credit to the boys. When people have come in, like Thiago Silva tonight, they've just stepped up. Same with Hakim Zayt. He's come in, he scored a goal. Hudson Adoy comes in again, performs well. So I'm, I'm just really impressed with the boys. And it's another another performance, mate, that we we just we carry on winning. I mean, who would have thought that Callum Hudson Adoy would actually start playing pretty well when he gets a consistent run of games? Funny that. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I mean, it, it's, I mean, apart from the goal, not really much else to, to cover on the game. I just wanted to touch on. But one performance, uh, Kai Havertz, I thought he did OK again tonight, but George, it's frustrating to see him up there and a couple of great opportunities and just a bit wasteful in front of goal. If he's going to kind of really push on, he's got to start taking a few of these opportunities, hasn't he? Yeah, and he's one that's really still got a huge question mark over his head, hasn't he? Um, in terms of the money, I know he doesn't control the amount of money, but he's coming for a lot of money. Um, supposed to be the biggest hot prospect. I think a lot of the journalists in Germany and um, reporters label him as the next kind of Michael Ballack, the big the big thing in Germany and we just haven't seen it even though I have seen glimpses of it in international football as well with him linking up with uh, Timo Werner but it just doesn't seem to happen when he puts on a blue shirt and um, listen he'll get time and he's again and he's getting minutes but he just needs to be more ruthless and uh, just have a bit more positive energy and a confidence in front of goal I think he's, he's really lacking that yeah, I mean, hopefully, hopefully that'll come. He's still young, as you say. But yeah, I think that's what's missing from his game. He just needs to be a little bit more clinical in front of goal. Because in the bigger mm. games, we might only get one or two opportunities. And if he fluffs both of them, that's the difference between, between winning and losing, essentially. Um, but one last positive to finish. I know it was great to see Christian Pulisic get on for about 15, 20 minutes at the end. Didn't really have much involvement, but that's, that's, that's a plus, I suppose, for the squad, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, it was great to see him put his boots on, get back on the grass. He... Although it was offside, he did do um, almost like the, uh, I can't remember who it was against, maybe Real Madrid where he goes round. Yeah. Maybe that was Ben Chua, but uh, he goes round and, and just puts it wide, but it was offside anyway. But it is, he's, he's got that. He's got that ability to change pace and change direction so quickly. Um, and he's definitely one of the most creative wingers we've got. So, 
such a positive to see him back on the turf. And again, everything just seems to be coming into place for Chelsea at the moment in terms of timings and results mm. and players coming back. And it just, you know, something's, something's brewing to be a very positive season for the Blues. Yeah, I, hope, I, I think it's important that we obviously manage his minutes. He's come, coming back from injury. We don't want to overdo him. So probably at the weekend, mm. maybe a few more minutes and then obviously into that international break. But yeah, finished. Malmo nil, Chelsea won. And another three points in the group. And it's kind of set up nicely for that Juventus clash, which looks like it's going to be winner takes top spot. So yeah, guys, make sure you smash like on the video. Hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. And we'll catch you in the next one.